What's up guys and uh, welcome if it's the 15th today that makes it 46 episodes this year so far I've been trying to keep track as the months go on it's going to get harder I'm going to have to start keeping a tally somewhere um, and uh, it is my birthday today just turned 38 Woohoo! Woo um, so I want to talk about like kind of a recap of you know this last year start like a, a um a tradition here for me of talking about like what's happened in the last year you know everybody's doing that on new years but i think it's a great time right now to look at it because for me the last year right around this date is when everything changed in a major way now if you know me if you've been following my story if you've just been following me period what's up sam um you know that I've been on this journey for some time now, but the specifically last year, right around this time is when some stuff really started popping off. Um, and, uh, you know, in a, in a weird way, like I had had a lot of personal growth internally in, in the, you know, before this time last year in the, in the couple of years prior to that, um, I'd had a decent amount of growth business wise. Um, and I think this year for me has been the year of growth that's become very visible to the external world, which is pretty awesome because I mean, what it means to me is that it's, it's reached a turning point where no longer is it just me grinding in the dark. It's, it's me grinding in the light and people are seeing that. And that's inspiring people, and it's exactly what I've been setting out to do, um, you know. And and the, you know the concept of calling it the murder mentality has come to me in the last year. Some of the coaches that I've hired have have been in the last year. I got off of a coaching call here with Wes Watson earlier on today. It was really awesome. Some great little nuggets, you know. But for the most part, what it was was like a confirmation. I'm doing good. Keep up with it. Keep sharpening it up. Keep getting it tighter and tighter. And just, you know, keep working my ass off. Um, but, you know, to, to recap, what I want to really talk about is like this specific day last year. Um, I've been low, guys. I've been low, low before. I've been strung out in a trap house, you know, secretly wanting to die, but not really having the balls to do it. Um, you know, amongst many other things, but this particular year, last year, um, once Cassie, I, you know, she had relapsed, uh, you know, apparently now and flipped on a dime and just, uh, literally just took everything. It just took everything. And I, I was so broken. I remember waking up on many occasions sitting and sleeping on a mattress that didn't even have sheets on it because I was too fucking depressed to put sheets on my bed and to, to sleep like a fucking human being. Thank you guys. Happy birthday for me. I appreciate you. <laughs> I was just so fucking depressed and, and my, my world had come crashing to a halt so quickly. And I was so committed to what I had going that it, I, I, it's like one of those things where it's like, you almost see somebody die while they're still breathing. And I, I recall, cause I was talking to somebody this morning, I recall, um, uh, you know, wanting to literally shoot myself. And like, I mean, it wasn't that I didn't have the balls to do it, but I just, I had developed so much as a person that the damage and pain that that would cause to the people around me was too much for me to bear on the way out. Like, and I think that that bears a little bit of, of looking at it because what it, what it tells me is that I'd reached a point in my life where the selfishness I displayed when I was using all the time and literally in a position where I might've died at any second that the drugs could have killed me. The lifestyle could have killed me. Any number of things could have killed me. And I didn't have the balls to do it, like really outright do it. But that I was in a position where I did have the balls that I could absolutely outright do it and wouldn't have, to, wouldn't have thought twice about it, but I didn't want to leave my kids. I didn't want to leave my mom with a bunch of questions. I didn't want to leave everybody that loved me and cared about me wondering why they weren't enough for me to, to keep living and being part of their lives. Um, and 
that's just a realization I came to as I'm talking about it right now. That's a pretty powerful thing to realize that I had had grown so much as a person that the that the act of suicide wasn't scary for me, but the the damage it would do to the people that loved me was too much for me to to bear. And that changed a lot of perspectives for me, you know. Um, but I started talking to people. I started discussing the life that I had lived, the life that I was going through. Lacey's literally in the background right now taking Polaroid pictures of me. <laughs> um, and a lot of people, it upset because a lot of people are like, oh, well, you're using her memory to get some sort of business traction or you're using her memory of this, that, or the other. Well, frankly, when it comes down to it, man, fuck you guys. I'll say that over and over again. Anybody that had an opinion about how I processed my grief, how I processed my life, how I chose to talk about those things, you can suck my dick and fucking choke on it. Like, And that's not from a level of hatred or anger. Like, the, There's nothing I could say to you that would help you understand what I went through unless you've been through it. And if you haven't, then your opinions about it are invalid. And if you listen to me talk ever, you know that I tell people straight up, if you haven't been through it, giving advice on how somebody should get through it is bullshit, it's conjecture, and it's lies. And people that lie or have an opinion about how somebody else should be getting through something that they've never fucking been through don't got no business weighing in on it or having opinions about it. But, so that being said, it, it was hard, but I had a lot of people on the other side of that reach out to me and say, dog, this is inspiring. Like, I appreciate your candidness. I appreciate your ability to be vulnerable through all of it. I appreciate your ability to be authentic. And I learned through that time that those are fucking superpowers. Like, this year has been the year of authenticity for me. This year has been the year that I really learned who the fuck I am and started just being that person at all times. I had somebody say to me earlier this year, and it was a mind-blowing experience, which, what's weird about it is that this person fucked off out of my life eventually, and I think it's because I was so consistent, so consistently exactly what they said I was, that they couldn't fuck with it. And But they said that you're the same person no matter who's around, aren't you? And I was like, I thought that's how everybody's supposed to be. But to somebody... For them to make that observation, that means that they're either used to other people not being like that or they themselves are not like that. Because what's understood don't need to be spoken about. Real recognizes real, the end. You know, and, and people have removed themselves or I've in some cases had to remove them from my life. The more authentic I've become, the more willing I've become to address what is important to me first. For lack of a better term, I'm one of the most em like empathic, empathetic, whatever you want to call it, people you'll ever meet. I consider other people's feelings and situations so fucking much, it is actually kind of crazy making sometimes. What's up, my dude? I love how you're wishing me happy birthday on all my different posts all the time. That's <laughs> sick. Um, and the, the thing is, is that like, I spend so much time, or at least I used to spend so much time worried about how my decisions might affect other people, how me sticking up for my own needs and wants and feelings in my life might affect somebody else, that I would subordinate them and I would damage my future, I'd damage my own life, I'd damage my emotions, I'd damage all kinds of stuff as a result of that. And I've learned in order to really be authentic, then you have to be willing to look at somebody in the face and say, I disagree and I'm not fucking doing it that way. You have to understand that sometimes if somebody's feelings get hurt because you want to be you and, and caring about you matters more than whatever they want you to do, then they don't really fucking like you that much now, do they? Like, like your feelings about how I can benefit you <laughs> are irrelevant if it's at my detriment to benefit you. But most people out there think that that's nice. Most people, I know this is going to sound weird, but I, want, I need you to hear me out on it. Most people will say about somebody, as a compliment, they would give you the shirt off of their back in cold weather. I, I fucking hate that phrase. I hate the idea that I have to fucking do something that might hurt me, fuck me, or do something bad to me. Like, for example walk around in the fucking freezing cold without a shirt because I just took my shit off and gave it to somebody else. 
Wouldn't it be a lot better to take that person somewhere where they could be warm? Wouldn't it be a lot better for that person to, to, I hate to say it, suffer through being cold for long enough for them to figure out the next time I need to fucking prepare? Aren't you denying somebody the pain of the circumstances they are in? Or cuddle them as well. <laughs> Aren't you denying somebody the pain of the circumstances they're in by trying to save them? The authenticity that I've learned in this last year because of, of one singular thing. I've had to save myself a lot of times, guys. I've had to do it multiple times since I've got clean. I've had to do it multiple times since I've moved to Kentucky and, and throughout my life. And I've lost everything I've ever owned so many times I can't count them. Like so many times I'd have to sit down and catalog them if that doesn't put it into, into, into like perspective. And people are so worried about losing things that their personal growth gets put as a side thing. Your level of success and contentment and peace of mind in life is directly tied inexorably. Look that up. It, it, it means that it is in no way, shape, or form ability to be pulled apart. Okay? <laughs> it's inexorably tied to your level of personal development by how developed a character you have. What is your character? That's authenticity. What you fucking do when nobody's looking or when people are looking specifically is who the fuck you are. And if you only do good when people are looking, then you're not really good, are you? You just like the clout. And if you only fucking do bad when nobody's looking, then you really don't give a fuck about whether or not it's bad. You care about whether or not you get caught. And so... I've had to pick myself up from nothing this last year in a way that I've never, like, it was, like, I knew when I came, when I had nothing because I was an addict, when I had literally reduced myself to being fucking homeless and hopeless on my own, it had a different type of effect on me than what this did this last time. This last time, and like, authentically, man, literally authentically, she took everything from me. She took my business, which I helped fuck, which I started and then helped build the, the new location for it. Literally helped build the fucking building. The house we bought together, the family we built, everything. Everything. Except for the fucking tattoo equipment I came into the relationship with and some clothes. And that was different because I felt secure. I felt secure. And everything got ripped away. The veil of security in life got ripped the fucking way so powerfully and so intensely that I will never, ever feel secure ever again. Other than that I am secure in the knowledge to know that I can make anything happen if I choose to. And I, I don't say that like a trauma response thing. I say that like, think of it like this. Like, I recognize that this world outside of me can absolutely be stripped away at the drop of a hat. That's not to say that I'm afraid, for example, that Lacey's gonna do the same shit that Cassie did, or that anybody's gonna do the same shit. But I mean, literally a car crash could take everything I've loved and all the people I love away in a, in a half a second. It could strip it all away. But I know that I can survive anything because I have found who I am through the trauma and adversity. One of my favorite speakers says this, that there's a hidden power. There's a hidden secret fucking power in trauma and adversity. It's so fucking strong. It's such, it's, it's beyond powerful. You won't ever know that part of you until you hit a wall so fucking hard that it feels like your fucking soul stopped, not just your heart. It feels like your fucking soul dropped out of your asshole. Like, but when you do hit a wall like that, it, it will either break you or change you, but it, it, it can only break you if you choose to let it happen. And, and the recap I'm really getting on for this year really is that like, I bounced back so much fucking higher than I fell. It was like the enemy. It was like Satan. It was like life tried to grab me like a fucking 
hunk of rock or clay and throw me onto the ground or or a beautiful piece of art and have it shatter and instead it turned out that I was one of them fucking crazy little bouncy rubber balls from when we were a kid. You know the ones you throw it as hard as you fuck can, can down? It can only go so far down because that's where the ground is and it just bounces high as fuck the harder it hits on the ground. And that's all of us. That's all of us. That's why... I try to teach these things. That's why I have people like in, in, in that are like, you know, with coaching with me. That's why I seek coaches out myself. That's why I do this thing that I call the murder mentality, because I want to see other people come from that type of adversity. And then when people look up, they're like, holy fucking shit, dog. Because I'm saying that. I'm looking at my life right now. Holy fucking shit, dog. I'm sitting, what is it, the 21C? I'm sitting in like the presidential suite of the 21C where Lacey is trying to help rewrite this history of my birthday because last year's was so fucking traumatic that she's like, I mean, literally like she's making this whole art project right now and coded the whole room in like pictures of us and like little, little phrases, little, uh, fake fortune cookies with cute little phrases and stuff. And like, and I'm sitting in this presidential suite. I've got both my kids full time. I'm apprenticing one of my children. I have a business that employs seven people. Um, I'm serving God. Like she says, I've, I've reconnected with my creator in a way that's, it's, it's un, unfucking touchable. Like I write letters to my creator every day like i'm telling you guys like just if there's one thing you ever take away from the stuff i talk to you about like write a letter to god every once in a while and tell him how you feel and if it doesn't fucking change you fuck i don't believe you that you did it that's how powerful that is I mean, that's just the things that are going on in my life on a positive level for interactions, the way I'm changing people. The people I employ are all relatively new tattoo artists, and they're fucking crushing it. In less than a year, Peyton has gone from tattooing out of the fucking house to being, like, in my opinion, one of the top traditional artists in the fucking city. In the state. And fuck, man. Time will tell exactly how far he goes. I'm going to tell how far anybody goes. Look, Jaden's doing the same fucking thing. Found his niche in, in traditional. Hanging out with Peyton and he's fucking crushing it too. Everybody around me right now is fucking crushing. And that's so amazing, man. So fucking amazing. And then to know that on top of all that, that I, I've gone from literally $200 to my name. $200 fucking dollars to my name this time, this day, last year. was it. I built the murder off of $200. I built the murder 3.0, third time's the charm, off of $200. It's the biggest tattoo shop almost anybody I know that comes into this thing. They're like, this is the biggest fucking shop I've ever been in. They also say it's the nicest. It smells good too. Everybody says it smells good because Lacey's always on with them candles. But like, then on top of that, I'm able to be there in a meaningful fashion for my, my children. I'm able to help keep my, my kids with their focus on the future. I'm teaching them how to be the type of person that directs their own ship in life. Can get whatever they want. Literally, I don't if, if my son's goal is just to be comfortable and to work enough to be comfortable and that's it. And he'd just like to be able to be comfortable, make art and have fun or whatever. That's good enough for me, but I can teach him how to do it because I've taught myself how to do the things I had done and been taught by other people. And more importantly, the blueprint for success is the same fucking blueprint. It's the same fucking blueprint, whether or not you're aiming here or here, the blueprint for success is the same, be it emotional, spiritual, physical, financial freedom, anything. It's the same fucking blueprint. And it's all dictated by whether or not you can follow that blueprint. I mean, I swear everybody wants to make life so complex. I swear strip. Like when you're trying to figure out whatever problem you have in your life, let me give some perspective right now. If, if you're trying to figure out whatever problem you have in front of you right now, strip everything you have away that's comfortable. Strip everything you have away that makes you happy. Strip 
everything you have a way that makes you feel like you're content or in any way, shape or form able to just chill, <laughs> strip all of the stuff that you think or that you need in your life away and just imagine yourself homeless with this same problem. And what would you do then? Would you tell yourself, keep stressing on this, bro. Keep thinking about how you can solve a problem that's unsolvable. Or would you tell you, take some fucking action. Apply to 50 fucking places. Do whatever the fuck you got. But don't wait another fucking second. Stop worrying about these little petty problems. Our lives are, we have affluenza. We're too convenient. Literally, the poorest people in our country are fucking rich by 80% of the world's standards. Probably more. Probably closer to 95%. People that we look at in our country, they're like, God, what it must it be like to live like that without running water. They still have power. <laughs> they still have fucking power. The people that live in the projects out here, as harsh as, as, harsh as it is, that ain't fucking Rio de Janeiro or South Africa. And that's real. The camaraderie between people when they live in the hardest of hard, hard places, the places that make your heart cold as fuck, the type of ways that those people can rely on one another, if they're fucking real, is a different type of hit. And I want to be that person to everybody that fucks with me. I want to be that person that everybody knows is going to come and be with it. That you could take everything from me again. And not only would I bounce back twice as fucking high, it would be twice as fast because the blueprint's that much more solidified. You could take every cent I have, the shop, everything, right now, and, and my house. And within six months, I'd be right where I'm at right now. I guarantee you. So, literally, I just want to invite all of you guys to really take a fucking serious look at your life and what you value. If you're valuing anything other than your relationship with your creator and your relationship with yourself, if you're valuing anything above those two things first, I'm not saying those other things shouldn't be valued, that your relationship with your kids shouldn't be valued, your relationship with your significant other shouldn't be valued. All of those things should be. But if you're valuing anything like those things before your relationship with your creator and your relationship with yourself, you'll never accomplish anything. I can't do anything without God. And I can't have a relationship with God if I can't have a relationship with me. And without those two things, everything is dog shit. So I invite you today to really get to know who the fuck you are. And then get to know who made you. For real. Another Billy Allsberg's things that I absolutely love, man, is like when you have a problem with the product, what do you do? You, you consult the manufacturer. When you got a problem with you, consult the manufacturer. Time tested, proven, word of God always stands true. Got goosebumps. And thank you for St. Francis's prayer, man. I do remember that. I remember going through this right then when you fucking sent that to me, bro. Like it fucking means a lot to me. Love you, man. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Go write yourself a letter to yourself and your creator. Tell yourself how dope you are. Tell yourself how great you want to become. And then ask your creator to show you exactly how you're going to do that. Love you all. Catch you tomorrow.